Hi there, I'm Marilyn Horick, WIC Ontario co-chair, coming at you with the guys from the Digital Insurance Pint podcast. And I want to thank Gore Mutual, Crew IO, and Garrison Breweries. Thanks very much for all your support. And uh, thank you guys for bringing Women in Insurance Cancer Crusade onto today's show. Hi there, and welcome to the Digital Insurance Pint podcast. I'm your host, Tom Reed. And as always, I'm joined by Adam Mitchell, CEO of Mitchell & Whale, Steve Earle, CEO of Cheap Insurance, Jeff Roy, CEO of Caliber Insurance, and today our special guest is Marilyn Horick, who is, uh, amongst other things, the co-chair of WIC Ontario. Hi, Marilyn. How are you doing? Really great. Thanks so much for having us. Awesome. So, uh, Marilyn, um, why don't you tell us how you became part of WIC? Uh, yeah, happy to. Um, like most people, cancer has uh, affected uh, my family and uh, with one in two Canadians um, affected by cancer, that's um, not, a, not a difficult thing. Um, but going back into uh, the early days of my career, which was you know, uh, probably towards the mid to, to late 90s, uh, I worked at Zurich Insurance and um, there was a woman who... Um, who was uh, a colleague of mine. I uh, really respected and admired her and she was a cancer survivor. And at the time, uh, when she came back to work, not a lot of people talked about cancer. Um, they didn't talk about what had happened. And um, I engaged in conversation and she told me about her experience and that she wanted to be different and uh, it was not something, you know, having breast cancer wasn't something that um, needed to be taboo. And um, she really wanted to change things. And she told me about her involvement in WIC, which at the time, you know, was formed in 1996. So it was relatively new. Uh, and, and she told me about this organization that she was getting involved in and how she was going to use that as a platform for making sure that it was no longer going to be a taboo subject whether you had prostate cancer or breast cancer or any other kind of cancer, that it was not something that people had to you know, go off on leave and no one talked about it. Uh, and I was really uh, inspired by that story. And of course, you know, my own family has, has had an impact as well. Uh, so I asked to be involved and, uh, and ended up being um, on the gala committee, which at the, you know, at the time was really small. Uh, it was, First, uh, first established in 1997, and at the time it was a, you know, small group. I I got involved uh, a little bit later in the early 2000s, and um, and stayed uh, as a volunteer. Then eventually ended up chairing the gala. And when you become a chair of one of the major events, they offer a, a board seat. And so I jumped on board and moved into communications and took over. Uh, national sponsorships, chapter relations, different portfolios, and ultimately ended up being uh, co-chair alongside Ellen Moore from, from Chubb. And, and now uh, that Ellen stepped away, I'm co-chair with, uh, with uh, Garth Pepper from, uh, from Liberty Mutual. Um, and you know, I, how I got into WIC and the time that I have spent um, working and volunteering with the organization is, um, you know, is important to me. Uh, and I think that, that uh, my former colleague's story was important, but why I've stayed involved is uh, almost um, more uh, impressive or powerful. And it really comes back to the WIC mission. It's our ability to unite um, the members of our insurance community behind um, cancer research and giving people a sense of purpose and giving um, the community members an opportunity to feel like they're making a difference when so, so, so many uh, colleagues and family members and friends have been impacted by cancer. Uh, it was the WIC mission and all that those volunteers were doing that um, had an impact that we're, you know, we were making a difference and giving people that peace of mind uh, that even even though it's not likely something that's you know completely going to get eradicated, although we try, um, it is a, a type of um, you know giving back, and it's a, a form of um, making a difference. Yeah, that's great. And you know when we uh, tell people that uh, the podcast is partnering with WIC, I mean there's instant 
awareness, instant sort of respect uh, for that because the WIC name is so well so well established in the insurance business. I mean, everybody everybody knows what WIC is. So oh, that's nice. a, test, a testament to the work that you and the volunteers have done over the years. So, yeah. It's incredible. Like you guys have raised uh, like what, 17 and a half, $18 million since 1996. And th- yeah. that's, is that, is that correct? Or somewhere in that area? 17 and a half million. Uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, so this is our 25th year. Uh, it's a banner year. It's, uh, it's amazing um, that we have the kind of support that, that we do. Um, even after all this long time, you know, there are, um, there are fundraising initiatives that come up and then kind of disappear. Uh, but the sustainability and the, the support that the insurance community has demonstrated um, really coming together behind something that I'd say is kind of bipartisan. It affects everyone. Uh, so you, you kind of put your, your work um, experiences aside and, and come together behind this. And, and yeah, so $17.5 million uh, over the course of 25 years, it's a, it's a huge banner year for us and the industry continues to rally uh, to support us and to support the mission. For that, we're extremely, extremely grateful. That's awesome. incredible, incredible so, story. Mary, let, let's get to know you a little bit more. So we, we with all, all of our guests, we do a little speed round, right? So emphasis on speed. So I need you okay. to ah. give me the first answer that comes in your head. Okay. No, there, there are no wrong answers, although some will, in fact, be ridiculed, uh, depending on your answer. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. Sure. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> so, Marilyn, what is your favorite Canadian band of all time? I'd have, this is, yeah, speed. Okay, that took too long. Um, so, Anne Murray, if she was a band, you know, because that, oh, that, that Anne Murray is okay. okay. That honestly, yeah. but Rush, if Nova you're really Scotia. looking for a band, oh. um, I'd have to I'd have to say Rush because there is no one cooler uh, than Neil Peart, and oh. uh, <laughs> uh, and Geddy oh. Lee probably has the best uh, singing voice, that most memorable okay. singing voice. There you go. Can okay, I just say uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not super with you on Geddy Lee's singing voice, but definitely the Neil Peart comment is bang on the money. So uh, well I, I done. Think- you're, 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 You're now like, tied for my favorite guest, Marilyn. Yeah, twenty percent of our guests are like <laughs> like Neil Parrott. I'm not sure if Tom's paying them or what, but <laughs> now, there might have been an email going to Marilyn beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, good, good Ottawa girl, Ann Murray. Hey, classic '80s singer. Hey, hey, hey. No, she's uh, she's Nova Scotia there, but she's Nova Scotia. Well, she, she lived in Ottawa. In Ottawa, she had, she had moved there. She didn't, she didn't grew up there, but she lived in Ottawa for a while, did she not? Uh, she she um, lived there, but she was. Uh, She's from Nova Scotia, just like this delicious beer. Uh, oh, what a segue. So, it's a good segue. Which, which beer did you open there? Uh, that was the Irish Red. Irish Red. Awesome. Actually, what it doesn't last you? long in our house. Uh, so <laughs> six pack arrived and it kind of, you know, disappeared. Vanished. Over 19. Yeah. Awesome. What was your high school nickname? I guess you could do a lot with Horrick, but uh, they stuck with man. <laughs> I don't know. Should we edit some of this? Seriously? Good news. You'll get a a copy of this to, uh, if if you need bits bits and pieces cut out, you will have the opportunity to do so. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So fill in the blank. If I was elected Prime Minister of Canada, blank would be legal. Tax evasion. Tax evasion. And it wouldn't be evasion, would it? Just a good, solid accounting. (laughs) <laughs> well, whatever uh, makes you sleep at night yeah is it wrong for a vegan to eat animal crackers no eat the crackers <laughs> okay and name one of the seven dwarfs grumpy grumpy that's a first i don't think anybody else is named grumpy we've had a lot of dopeys a few sleepies but i don't think grumpy's uh, that i think that's a first no, for grumpy I, I think i think he's a complicated person a complicated <laughs> dwarf <laughs> I have a lot of time for grumpy people. They generally have a really interesting perspective and uh, and a good way to solve things. They just are misunderstood. Have Steve. you met Steve? Yeah, Steve Earl. I, like, I really like this girl. I, really really, really like I don't think me or Jeff have got any suck up answers yet. Yeah. So let's keep going for a bit. No, I no, mean, no, just no. play to the other two. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. I, I've never heard anybody like a grumpy Steve or angry uh-huh. Steve so much. It's great. Oh. I love it. <laughs> so... Marilyn, let's let's get into a little bit more. Uh, we'll get we'll get past. You know, we'll have to leave Jeff and Adam to uh, work on their suck up answers down the road here. But let's let's get back into a little bit more about Wick. So let's 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 uh, tell us your favorite Wick story. 
could be anything. Yeah. Well, like what's, what's, what, what really sticks in your mind when it comes to WIC? So there are a ton. I have been, um, I've been around for long enough within the WIC organization that I've seen and been and attended events across Canada. And that's been a privilege. Um, I would say uh, there are moments at Relay for Life, uh, which is actually our, our largest fundraising event. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever attended, but there are moments at Relay for Life that are extremely poignant. Um, there is a survivor lap um, and it's quiet and it's meaningful and it's, uh, it's an important part of that event. Uh, it's a day though um, that is spent in celebrating the, the lives of people who are, um, who are fighting cancer, uh, those who we remember uh, and, and do so lovingly. Uh, and we pay tribute to them through luminaries um, which are lit um, along a track. Of course, this year, as we did last year, it, you know, it'll be a virtual event. But those moments at, at Relay really stand out. Um, it's, it's juxtaposed with some of the fun that we've had at some of the other events. Um, you know, gala, dancing on the dance floor to the ABBA tribute band. Um, that, that's a memorable one. Uh, the time when we announced to the board that um, we had an increase in our national sponsor numbers. We had grown it from a small group initially 15 years ago, five national sponsors, uh, and grew it um, over the course of time. And uh, we announced that there were 15 national sponsors, and within a few months we were at 17. I mean, that's an, that was a memorable day. Most recently, we had our uh, our WIC breakfast in Ontario. Uh, and it was the first real virtual event that we had hosted, um, thanks to the Canadian underwriter that supported us with that. And, um, and the breakfast went off without a hitch. We had a doctor from the UFT that is a recipient of some of our fundraising dollars. Uh, and he spoke and, um, you know, we really tried to follow the same format uh, of the event and uh, decided not to charge anything for the tickets. We made it completely complimentary. Just come and learn. It's part of our, part of our mission that while we raise money for cancer research and awareness, we also um, spend time focusing on, uh, on educating people and breaking down that stigma, right, that, that I talked about earlier. Um, so having this doctor from UFT come and speak with us um, was, was really powerful, uh, especially considering that we had almost as many people come and join us online, 7.30 in the morning, kind of breakfast when we're all, you know, feeling pretty virtualed out, but they came out in droves just like uh, the industry does for WIC. And while we didn't charge anything for the, for the tickets to attend, we actually generated more uh, in the way of donations for uh, Canadian Cancer Society and for cancer research. Uh, so we, we generated more out of that event um, than we had in any previous uh, breakfast, that breakfast event. So, you know, wow. those are some of the really powerful memories that, that I have of, uh, of WIC. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Uh, I, I think I noticed on your website that, uh, you know, 80% of the, of the people in the insurance industry are women, roughly 80,000 people, which, you know, is, is that, that stuff blew me away. Uh, just out of curiosity, who are the biggest supporters of WIC right now? Who are your biggest supporters? We have uh, incredible supporters, community supporters um, like yourselves um, and uh, event sponsors uh, that come out in, in droves. Um, you know, we have uh, amazing teams of people that, that uh, coordinate all of the events that we run. And I'm pleased to say that it's not... Um, overly difficult to place the call and and here on the other end of the line yeah I'm going to come on board as a sponsor I'm going to come out I'm going to come on board as a as an event sponsor um, it's not to take away from the effort involved in in sponsorship and generating those those funds but there is uh, incredible support from the industry so I'd say event sponsors are, are big WIC supporters um, 
uh, our golf event, Relay for Life. Uh, our national sponsors are, uh, are um, amazing, and I encourage everyone to, to go onto WIC.ca to, to learn more about those 17 organizations that make a three-year commitment uh, to WIC of uh, $15,000 a year. Uh, they're not just contributing financially and ensuring that we can support the kind of additional fundraising that we do and ensuring that we have um, a base, a donation base every year to give to the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, but they're also leaders uh, in the industry. They're our cheerleaders. They're the ones that help to ensure that we uh, fill a room at gala. Uh, you know, if we have an event at the Royal York, if we have an event at Angus Glen, if we if we have Relay for Life, uh, whether it's online or in person, that these events are attended uh, and in a really big way. So they they bring uh, brokers to the event, they they bring other carriers to the event, reinsurers, uh, and our national sponsors are, are are huge supporters. And I'd have to say that while we look at the spectrum of all the supporters and donors, our volunteers are probably our biggest um, our biggest supporters. Uh, this is an entirely volunteer-based organization. Uh, we have 12, 13 people on the Ontario board at the moment, and everyone rolls up their sleeves, everyone has a portfolio or two, and three in one instance, and that person um, uh, has all of my appreciation for, for the work that they do. Uh, our volunteers are, are huge supporters. They work tirelessly um, to, to, make, uh, to make it all look easy. Well, Marilyn, that's great. You're harnessing a lot of people power and getting a lot of people, you know, getting behind a great cause. Great. Mm -hmm. So what's on the 2021 WIC agenda? Where, where are you guys going for this year? Well, this is our 25th anniversary. Uh, so it's, it is a banner year. We are still in, uh, in the pandemic. And so we know that uh, all of the adjustments that we've been making to, to pivot and to create uh, new opportunities for uh, the people that want to come out and support cancer research uh, and programs, uh, that we'll continue to do so. Uh, we encourage everyone to, to come out to our events, uh, virtual or in person. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're celebrating 25 years. Um, and nice. uh, what started as grassroots initiatives has really grown. It's you know, 17 and a half million dollars now. And it's not just Ontario. Um, we have four chapters. So what's going on at WIC is, um, is kind of different in, in every province. Uh, Ontario is the largest, we're the longest standing, um, founded in 1996. Uh, we surpassed the $10 million milestone um, in donations made to Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, our, our board and the volunteers and companies that supported us, that was a huge milestone event and that just happened. So that announcement happened at the tail end of the beginning of last year. Uh, we have a strong volunteer board and we're recognized as the largest corporate donor for the Canadian Cancer Society. Alberta is um, a long-standing, dynamic, uh, feisty group of supporters and, um, and they have, um, they established our first ever um, grant for cancer research uh, and that's important for their uh, constituents. Uh, they're, they're, they want to know that it's going to a particular research initiative, that, that that's a powerful message for the people who are donors in Alberta and that support WIC. Uh, so they're going to continue to, to focus on, um, on that kind of directional uh, work and, and directing their funds to specific research grants. In British Columbia, uh, they've traditionally given to Camp Good Times and Lodges. Um, Camp Good Times is a camp for, for kids with cancer. Um, lodges allow family members who need to, um, you know, British Columbia is a big province and people have to drive a long way to take a loved one, whether it's a child or a family member to, um, to their cancer treatments. And so um, the BC chapter uh, decided to direct their funds to support those family members so that they could stay overnight at their lodges. Uh, they've also directed uh, for 2021 to give to um, the Cancer Prevention and Support Center in Vancouver. And there's a, a lovely little garden that they're opening up in the spring. And that's going to be um, 
sort of with thanks to to WIC BC. So it's a, a really inspired and innovative uh, volunteer board. And in Quebec, I'm extremely proud uh, of um, of that team. They're 10 years strong. They reached a $1 million milestone uh, last year in donations to, to the Canadian Cancer Society, an incredibly um, strong and cohesive group. Um, every single one of us has been touched by cancer. So there are initiatives happening all, all across the country. And on Ontario in particular, um, we are pivoting. We have a fantastic group of uh, young insurance professionals who are um, who have created a program of online virtual events. There's one coming up, uh, likely in March. It's another trivia night. The first one that they held was in September. Uh, it was uh, you know more people than they expected turning out, and it was um, it was a great uh, great event. Uh, so that's the next generation. Uh, of uh, of WIC, uh, they'll have an event in in March. We have um, uh, our relay coming up in July on July 12th, and again that'll be virtual. Our gala uh, is likely going to be postponed, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID. Uh, but we will need to to look to see what we um, if that becomes something virtual, if we do something different, uh, and we'll take our cues from uh, support and, and feedback from our national sponsors as well. Uh, in, in place, uh, because of the success of the, um, of the breakfast that we held in November, uh, we'll likely have another education breakfast and, um, and do so because of the fantastic feedback that, that we received. Uh, so we look forward to announcing more um, uh, about that particular event and of course making the most of our um, online um, existence and uh, and the fact that people are maybe feeling a little bit weary uh, having to work from home we uh, we decided to change things up a little bit and um, and enlisted our uh, our board members and volunteer base to create uh, a new program where we're uh, selling um, selling gift boxes online through through our wic.ca um, website uh, so it's it's like bringing home equals happy a little bit of uh, lift a little bit of joy um, and uh, and in the meantime making donations at the same time um, through the the purchase of, and giving of those of those boxes they were successful over the holidays so we'll push through with a valentine's box we'll have one that's directed to people that are working from home bring a little sunshine to their lives and uh, and we're, we're happy to have the industry support us in that awesome Marilyn two-part question mm -hmm. um, well, most of our viewers are brokers. Yeah. What can brokers do to become more engaged with WIC and not just by uh, writing checks, whether it's frontline staff or other people, how, how do we engage? And um, is it volunteerism, that sort mm -hmm. of thing? So how do we engage more with WIC that way? And the second part is I'm in Atlantic Canada. Um, tell me more about the presence there and maybe how to get things going more here. Great. Uh, how brokers can get involved. Uh, I'm sure everyone uh, listening in will remember that IBAO was a, a huge supporter of ours and we, um, we received a lot of engagement and um, participation as a result of that. Um, through this partnership that we have um, with with you, um, we expect that you know brokers are also going to be interested in, in getting on board, um, and we're thrilled that this kind of reach into the industry is is happening. Um, I don't know, maybe even more important now now than ever. Canadian Cancer Society reports um, that they've had a drop of eighty million dollars in their fundraising activity um, as a result of the pandemic. So the kind of support that that we can see from the existing um, supporters and uh, and the brokerage community is maybe more important now than ever. I see brokers uh, getting involved by participating in events, uh, and we'll get to Atlantic Canada in a second. Uh, participating in events um, and uh, and coming on board as national sponsors. We do have a national sponsor, um, a broker that's a national sponsor. We're thrilled to to have them 
join us. Uh, and that's an expanding group, expanding opportunity for, for brokers. Um, that proposition, you know, might be too much to, to ask for, for some organizations. And so I would say uh, supporting us by letting their letting employees know what events are coming up for WIC, um, putting us onto intranets and um, having that be part of their communication and outbound um, communication to, to their employees kind of getting that out there, especially if it's an event that has to do with, um, uh, has to do with awareness, education, and fulfilling that part of the mandate. Uh, if we raise money for Canadian Cancer Society, that is a fantastic thing, uh, but, but building out the, uh, the awareness and visibility and removing that stigma and giving people a place where they can learn more about cancer uh, is, I think, a, a huge part of our mission and where I think um, you know, brokers will get a lot of value. I say this because um, we are all looking for ways as business owners to uh, derive uh, greater value for our employees uh, and create engagement opportunities with them. Um, WIC has delivered that for companies across the ecosystem, whether a broker or a reinsurer, uh, a supplier within our insurance community or, uh, or a carrier. Uh, the, this idea of um, providing something to employees that they can get behind, that they can unite, and that it actually affects them because everybody's been affected by cancer. It's a huge boost for, for engagement. Uh, and, uh, and that brokerage is, you know, is a, a strong business model that you know, would need to have that kind of engagement as well. So those are, those are all you know, good things that, uh, where I'd expect brokers to, to get involved. Um, in terms of uh, Atlantic Canada, we have had a, a long-lasting relationship with um, with uh, organizations and individuals. I mean, sometimes it has to do with um, it has to do with one individual that um, you know has been a part and has been supportive for years. Uh, Nancy Thorne ha uh, was that person for us, uh, and um, the Insurance Brokers Association of New Brunswick. Uh, and in Nova Scotia, there have been a few events over the course of my history with WIC where we, um, where we were the um, happy recipients of donations that were generated because of uh, fun events that, that were held, uh, pub nights, um, uh, sort of dance events. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was a motorcycle event that, that was held that went all across Atlantic Canada. And, uh, and funds were, were generated. This really speaks to the, the model that WIC established years ago, less so about you know, major events and more about the grassroots nature of, uh, of fundraising where employees and um, competing broker offices and, um, and competing markets get together and, and everything that's business related is put to the side for the purposes of, uh, of supporting a cause that everybody can believe in and everybody shares. So those kinds of community related events um, and grassroots events um, have actually driven uh, a, a sizable contribution. Um, the number is around 100,000, a little bit over $100,000 that's actually come from, uh, from Atlantic Canada. And um, so, you know, you're giving me an opportunity here, Steve, to say sort of a, a shameless plug that we continue to look for um, individuals who want to um, play a volunteer role in supporting WIC, no matter where you come from. If you're in, uh, if you're in Manitoba, if you're in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, if you have uh, not yet found a chapter that exists, uh, we nevertheless have grassroots opportunities that we're absolutely uh, would love to, to talk to you about uh, and create those uh, volunteer and donation um, connections. Of course, volunteer opportunities exist for all chapters across Canada, and, um, and we have uh, actually several um, uh, openings right now for communications um, talent uh, and for fundraising donations, for online social, social media support. And um, so, you know, the, the door is always open. Uh, 
operators are standing by. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Steve, I think we could have Angry Steve, uh, Angry Steve Against Cancer pub night at Garrison once the things open up after COVID, right? Uh, the, the dip crew here could fly out there and Steve could organize it. What do you think, Steve? Sound like fun? Yeah, we're going to spotlight all the idiots that aren't supporting. So I want a list from the Maryland. <laughs> So Marilyn, I'm going to get you to kind of wrap up here. So we always give our guests the opportunity to say the last word, and but and we we don't usually put any any caveats on that last word. But we've heard all the great things that are happening, and maybe I'll give you some gentle nudging you can talk about in your last word. Who isn't supporting WIC, and you know who really should, or what opportunity areas are there for others to support WIC? So I'm going to pass the microphone over to you, uh, Marilyn. You've got. Uh, You've got the opportunity to wrap, wrap the show here, so please go ahead. Well, thanks very much, all of you, for, for this opportunity. Uh, the, um, the work that you're doing is great. I envy you. I think this is fun. Um, the work that we're doing at WIC is, um, is incredible, and I'm extremely proud of all of the um, $17.5 million that uh, has been generated and donated to the Canadian Cancer Society. Um, we have 25 years um, behind us and um, are ready and um, strong with a fantastic group of volunteers to, um, to forge on to the next 25. Uh, where do I think um, there's an opportunity for growth or where do I think um, there's, a, there's a missed opportunity out there? I would say that um, the relationship that we have with the Canadian Cancer Society is one that isn't uh, completely well uh, known and, uh, and we need to get this out there. Um, 25 years ago, we struck an agreement with the Canadian Cancer Society that every dollar that WIC donates, that is donated from the industry through WIC, uh, bypasses the administrative fees. So there are no administration fees that are applied by the Canadian Cancer Society. So if someone is looking to make a donation uh, and it's part of their annual contribution, their annual philanthropic or charity giving, uh, and they choose the Canadian Cancer Society, that giving through WIC is um, the most powerful way of making sure that their dollars um, go to directly to, to cancer research and programs. And so I'd say that uh, anyone who isn't giving through WIC is, um, is that, that missed opportunity and where uh, we could uh, harness uh, even more power for, for WIC. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's, that's great. great. Thank you very much. That's, that's um, awesome. That is amazing. Great story, Marilyn. Thanks for all the work you do and everything you do and your passion and getting everybody fired up and getting involved. And even during COVID, you had a record year by the sound of it. You know, a lot of people were scared. Cancer Society is down $80 million, but you had such a great year. So great job to every, every, all, the, all the work your people are doing. Thanks very much. It's been, it's been a great year. I know it was challenging for, for a lot of people, uh, and, uh, but cancer didn't go away. You know, t cancer doesn't go into lockdown. Uh, so we were, we were really motivated and inspired to do everything that we could. Uh, and a couple of our events really did hit it out of the, the park. Uh, more support's always needed. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for, uh, for being part of, the, part of the answer and being on this ride with us.